بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين ما بعد continue reading from the clarification of the meaning of the testification that Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم he's the messenger of Allah وما إن شهادة أن محمد رسول الله and the meaning of the testification of faith that Muhammad is the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam The author he clarified and he mentions about this meaning and the correct understanding and what this statement necessitates four points four points we have discussed two of them and there are two more to discuss بِإِذْنِ تَعَالَى طَاعَتُهُ فِيمَا أَمَرَ to obey him and that which he has commanded وَتَصْدِقُهُ فِيمَا أَخْبَرَ And to believe in that which he has informed of. وَاجْتِنَابُ مَا عَنْهُ نَهَى وَزَجَرَ And to avoid, leave off, and to refrain from everything that he has prohibited. وَأَلَّا يُعْبَدُ اللَّهُ إِلَّا بِمَا شَرَعَ That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he should not be worshipped in any manner except in the way that is legislated. And the, in, the, in the way that is legislated uh, by the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he legislated uh, at the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and with the conveyance of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We have seen that the first two points, the evidences with regards to these, and the clarification of that, and the obligation of a believing in everything that he has informed us of sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, whether we comprehend that or understand it or not, if it has come and you understand the wisdom behind that, so on and so forth whether it's from the affairs of the unseen or from the affairs that occurred in his time, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, whether it's from the affairs with regards to al-tawheed wal-iman wa-sifat illahi azza wa jil, or with its, if it's with regards to the affairs of uh, the rulers and uh, so on and so forth, with regards to salat and how to perform them, all of this information that has come from him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and the commandments and the prohibitions likewise, all of this is revelation from Allah azza wa jil. And we have seen some of the evidences for this. All of the commandments that he has come with, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And likewise, the prohibitions and the acts of worships and the obligations that one must perform in one day and one night in his lifetime. Likewise, and the manner to perform them and the conditions therein, so on and so forth. And the pillars for these affairs, they have all been clarified in the sunnah of the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this is revelation. This is revelation from Allah, azza wa jal. This is revelation from Allah Azza wa Jal وَمَا يَنْطِقُ عَنِ الْهَوَى that he does not uh, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam speak from his desires he does not speak from his desires sallallahu alayhi wa sallam إِنْ هُوَ إِلَّا وَحْيٌ يُوحَى it is only a revelation that is revealed to him it is only a revelation that is revealed to him and likewise everything that he is informed of and that which he has commanded, he must be obeyed in that, and that is his right, and that is from the obligation of this, st this statement. And this is what this statement requires and, nece and necessitates whenever a person he testifies and he bear bears witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he is a messenger and a prophet sent from Allah azza wa jal with revelation. Sent from Allah azza wa jal with revelation, he knows that what he has come with is from Allah and that he must be obeyed. And Allah, he says, we did not send any messenger except that he should be obeyed. Except that he must be obeyed by the permission of Allah. So the right of the messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and then also the right of this testification of, of faith and the correctness of iman, that in believing that Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is the messenger of Allah, is to believe everything that he is informed of and everything that has been reported from him authentically in the books of hadith, particularly fi al umuhat al sitta Particularly in Al Muhat Sitt, these the six great books of Hadith in Bukhari and Muslim, Abu Dawood, uh, and Tirmidhi, and Nasa'i wa Ibn Majah. Particularly in these books and also in other books of Hadith, if the chain has been reported authentically on the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, it must be accepted and it must be one must believe that it's the truth from Allah azza wa jal and that one must apply it in the proper manner. But particularly in these books, in these books here, whenever the majority of the narrations have come and that are reported authentically, they come in these in these books. Although there are many other books and works of hadith as well that contain many authentic and uh, good and accepted narrations. What Allah hamd. 
So then his right is to obey him, and this is what it means. And his right is that he's believed, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and this is what this means. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna muhammadan rasulullahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So the one who does not believe the narrations of the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, where is he at with his testification? Where is he at with his testification? He bears witness that he's the messenger of Allah, but then he does he disbelieves in his statement, or he doesn't believe in some of his statements that are, repent, are, that are reported authentically. He finds fault with them, and, and the likes like this, this person's in danger. Likewise, the one who turns away from his obedience, the one who turns away from his obedience, and we have seen that the difference between the two, the one who believes he does not have to obey him, or he believes he does not have to believe him, then this one, his, his shahada will not be accepted. But the one who believes that he must obey him, and he believes that everything he says is the truth, and this is correct, but he falls short in that because of some deficiencies or some shubuhat maybe in the affairs uh, of the deen because of a weakness of knowledge and so on and so forth or a weakness of desires and determination to be straight and upright and obedient to Allah Azza wa Jal, then his shahada will be deficient according to that uh, opposition to the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So likewise, the next affair, the third issue that the author he mentioned with regards to the clarification of the meaning Shahadati and Muhammadan Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Ishtinabu ma anhu naha wa zajara. Ishtinabu ma anhu naha wa zajara. To stay off, excuse me, to stay away from and to refrain, to leave off everything that he has prohibited. And ma anhu naha, that which he has prohibited Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Wa zajara. A zajara hu an nahyu bi shidda. So there's a nahi, a prohibition, and then there's a prohibition with with, with, uh, with shidd, that's severe and stern, harsh. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he prohibited some certain things, and certain things he prohibited them harshly and sternly. There's a stern prohibition, like the prohibition of shirk, like the prohibition of shirk. So everything that he has prohibited, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, then it must be avoided and it must be stayed away from. It must be avoided and it must be left off entirely. Ijtinabu. And this is the fact uh, of the reality of that statement. The one who bears witness that he is a messenger sent from the Lord of the worlds, sent from Rabbil Alameen subhanahu wa ta'ala, then whatever he commands, he only commands at the command of Allah. And whatever he prohibits, he prohibits at the command of Allah as well. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And therefore, his commandment must be applied and complied to. And his prohibition must be avoided and stayed away from. And all of this, seeking the pleasure of Allah alone, and seeking his mercy subhanahu wa ta'ala. So therefore, اجتنابوا معنه نهى وزجرا To leave off and to refrain and to stay away from everything that he has prohibited sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This means that a person, he'll be far from that and he'll be cautious from that. If a believer were to hear of something that the Prophet, he has prohibited sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he would leave it immediately. He would leave it immediately. If he knows about that, he would leave it. And if he felt negligent and someone reminded him, he would he would leave it. And if he were ignorant of the affair and he did not have knowledge of the prohibitions or certain prohibitions of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, whenever he heard that these issues were prohibited, he would leave them. He would leave them. Naam? He will leave them. Because these prohibitions that are clarified from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and that they have a sacred right and that they should not be touched or perpetrated and one should not commit them. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has mentioned that there's a punishment behind these things. And likewise Allah Azza wa in His book and there's a threat likewise for the one who disobeys Allah and who disobeys the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. فَلْيَحْذِرِ الَّذِينَ يُخَارِفُونَ عَنْ أَمْرِهِ أَنْ تُسِيبَهُمْ فِتْنَةٌ أَوْ يُسِيبَهُمْ عَذَابٌ أَلِيمٌ Let those who oppose his command, let those who oppose his command take heed and take warning. Let them beware or else a, 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 a terrible calamity will befall, will befall them or, or a, a painful punishment will befall them. So the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he has prohibited many different issues from the affairs of speech and likewise actions. And there are also characteristics and traits that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he has prohibited. There are manners and conduct, likewise certain types of behavior. All of this, I mean, there are issues here with regards to these affairs where there have come prohibitions. Pro prohibitions in the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. An individual, he must learn them and know them and he must leave them off seeking the pleasure of Allah. He must leave them off seeking the pleasure of Allah. 
So the one who testifies to this statement, but he believes and he has the aqidah and the creed, as has proceeded with the other affairs, he has the creed that he does not have to uh, leave off that which he has prohibited, that he can partake in whatever he likes. This person, he he has this creed and belief. Yeah, then Billah, his shahada would not be accepted. This is what this shahada necessitates, that one believes that. In his heart, he believes that everything the Prophet ﷺ must be whatever he has prohibited, excuse me, it must be left off. He believes that. Now, as for the one who he does believe that, but then he fell victim to his whims and he's overcome by his desires and he fell in to some of those things that the Messenger ﷺ, he has prohibited and he perpetrated some of the things that are considered haram and that uh, the Messenger have sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he has declared them to be haram and impermissible, then uh, along with his confession that he must uh, avoid them and leave them off, and that which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said is the truth, but he fell weak, weak again, then likewise his shahada will be weak according to his deficiency and according to his sin and according to his transgression. And according to his trans transgression. But one thing that we should remember is that the ulama they mention about sins and disobedience to Allah and His Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that they say, Al-Ma'asi barid al-Kufr. Al-Ma'asi barid al-Kufr. That means, Al-Ma'asi tusiru wa tufdi ila kufr. Ila al-Kufr wa yadhim billah. That sins and actions of disobedience, disobeying Allah Azza wa Jal, and disobeying the Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, these actions are the means that lead an individual to disbelief. These this this is the path the pathway to disbelief and to exiting and leaving the deen of Islam is being involved in sins. So then sins and it's not a light affair. It's not a light affair. Not every sin, we understand properly, not every sin, every sin takes a person out of the deen. And not every action of disobedience takes a person out of the deen. But the point is here that these sins, they lead a person in that way. If a person is not careful, he can become engulfed in sins until he disbelieves. Yadhan Billah. Al-Ma'asi Barid Al-Kufr. Barid Al-Kufr. So then the one who opposes the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and disobeys him, and perpetrates and commits that which he has prohibited, along with the correct iman and belief in him, sallallahu alayhi wa and the rest of the pillars as well, then this is an indication of a weakness of his faith. And likewise, uh, a, a clarification of a deficiency in his shahada. A deficiency in his shahada that the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa that Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa he's the messenger of Allah. He is the messenger of Allah. So the author, he says, in clarification again, اجتنابو ما عنه نها وزجراء اجتنابو اجتنابو ما عنه نها وزجراء To leave off and to stay away from everything that he has prohibited. Sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And like this, Allah Azza wa Jal, he has clarified and he has mentioned in his book, he says, Subhanahu wa ta'ala وَمَا آتَاكُمُ الرَّسُولُ فَخُذُوهُ وَمَا نَهَاكُمْ عَنْهُ فَانْتَهُ that whatever the messenger he has given you, then you must take it, and meaning you must follow it. And whatever he has prohibited from, prohibited you from, then you must leave it. Then you must leave it. So this noble verse here in Surah Al-Hashr, it clarifies these two rights and this understanding, uh, that which uh, has preceded any of these points here are clarified in this verse, and this verse is an evidence for these three points that we have discussed so far. تَصْدِيقُهُ فِيمَا أَخْبَرَ وَطَعَاتُهُ فِيمَا أَمَرَ وَاجْتِنَابُ مَا عَنْهُ نَهَا وَزَجَرَ Allah, He says, whatever the messenger He has given you, then you must take it, meaning you must follow it. And whatever He has prohibited you from, then you must leave it entirely. So this means that whatever the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he has given you, meaning from information and from akhbar, whatever he has informed you of, from the upright uh, and truthful speech that he has come with sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and likewise whatever he has given you and whatever he has informed you with and whatever he has commanded you or encouraged you to do from the commandments that he has commanded, whether obligatory or recommended, likewise these things they must be complied to. فخذوه يعني امتثالا للأمر وتصديقا للخبر يعني you take this uh, and you accept this and you follow this you believe in the statements that he has made صلى الله عليه وسلم and he has informed us about and likewise you comply to his command with obedience 
Whatever the messenger he gives you, then follow it and take it, accept it, نعم, and, and comply to it. Yani from from, from uh, statements and from information, and from his hadith, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and likewise from the awamr and the commandments that he has, uh, that he has brought, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. All of this complying to his command and likewise believing in that which he is informed of, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. نعم, تَشْدِقُهُ فِي مَا أَخْبَرَ وَطَاعَتُهُ فِي مَا أَمْرَ and the second part of the verse, Allah, he says, وَمَا نَهَاكُمْ عَنْهُ فَانْتَهُ And that and whatever he has prohibited you from, then leave it off entirely. And this is the clarification of the third point that is mentioned in the text here. وَاجْتِنَابُ مَا عَنْهُ نَهَا وَزَجْرَ وَاجْتِنَابُ مَا عَنْهُ نَهَا وَزَجْرَ So there are evidences in the book of Allah, Azza that clarify the meaning of the shahada. That clarify the meaning of the shahada. It just has proceeded with the, the, the shahada, لا إله إلا الله ولله الحمد ولله الحمد so that which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he has prohibited, it's an obligation to leave it. It's an obligation to leave it with the creed that, and, and, and the belief in the heart that one will leave that seeking ple the pleasure of Allah. And that whenever he leaves that and he is obeying the messenger, in reality, he is obeying Allah. He is leaving and he, and he is taking that which the messenger has come with and believing in it and following it with regards to the information and the narrations and likewise with regards to the commandments and he's leaving off the prohibitions that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has prohibited all of this obedience to the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam but in obedience to Allah hoping for the reward from Allah and uh, hoping for the, the blessing and the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it has been narrated likewise in authentic narration in Bukhari and Muslim from the hadith of Abi Hurairah radiyallahu anhu that clarifies these points here and the understanding of this narration the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he has commanded and he has mentioned in this authentic narration مَا نَهَيْتُكُمْ عَنْهُ فَاجْتَنِبُوهُ Even the wording is very similar. The wording even in this narration and likewise in the verse this, this narration clarifies that verse and these two texts here are the clarification of what the author has mentioned. Rahimahullah ta'ala that which I prohibited you from, then leave it off entirely. And that which I have commanded you with, then do as much of it as you can. Then do as much of it as you can. This is the wording of Adima Muslim fi Sahihihi Rahimahullah. Likewise, in the wording uh, in Sahih Bukhari, the Prophet he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, if I prohibited you from anything. فَإِذَا نَهَيْتُكُمْ عَنْ شَيْءٍ يعني anything نَكِرَ فِي سِيَاكِ الشَّرْطِ فَإِذَا نَهَيْتُكُمْ عَنْ شَيْءٍ فَاجْتَنِبُوهُ then leave it off entirely وَإِذَا أَمَرْتُكُمْ بِأَمْرٍ فَأْتُوا مِنْهُ مَسْتَطَعْتُمْ and if I commanded you with a commandment then do it as much as you can then do it as much as you can so here we see that <coughs> this is the correct meaning that what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he has prohibited, it must be, it must be left off and it must be avoided. And it must be done with the belief that this is obedience to Allah azza wa jal. Because he's the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because the, he's the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In this narration, the ulama, they mention some very beneficial points with regards to the affairs of complying to the commandment and staying away from the prohibition. Because this is the right of the messenger. And likewise, the commandments of Allah, and that which, and meaning that has come in the book of Allah. And as well, that which Allah he has commanded, is, and that, excuse me, that which the messenger he has commanded, is that of what Allah has commanded. And that which Allah, the messenger has prohibited, it is just as that which Allah has prohibited. Now, because the messenger he has sent from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and we have seen the narration of this, of uh, Al-Makdab, Al-Makdad ibn Ma'adi Kalibah that has proceeded. So with regards to this compliance and with regards to this submission and uh, complying to the commandment and avoiding the prohibition, there are some details that are related to this and some benefits that a believer must be aware of and, uh, and know in order to apply it and be upon the correct understanding and the straight path with regards to action. And to know the limits of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we see in the narration, 
He said, Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, مَا نَهَيْتُكُمْ عَنْهُ فَاجْتَنِبُوهُ That which I have prohibited you from, then leave it. Then leave it. فَإِذَا نَهَيْتُكُمْ عَنْ شَيْءٍ عَنْ شَيْءٍ فَاجْتَنِبُوهُ If I prohibited you from something, then leave it. Then leave it. Just like this, in, a, in an absolute form. Then leave it. But whenever he mentioned the commandment, Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what did he say? He, he mentioned that along with the condition. وَمَا أَمَرْتُكُمْ بِهِ فَافْعَلُوا مِنْهُ مَسْتَطَعْتُمْ And that which I have commanded you with, then do it as much as you can. وَإِذَا أَمَرْتُكُمْ بِأَمْرٍ فَأْتُوا مِنْهُ مَسْتَطَعْتُمْ And if I commanded you, if I command you with a commandment, then do it as much as you can. As much as you can. So from here the ulama, they have clarified that uh, with regards to the commandment, and the obligation of fulfilling the commandment, this is uh, coupled with ability. Yani that one will perform the commandment according to one's ability. And like this, likewise, Allah he has mentioned in his book, فَاتَّقُوا ma istata'atum And fear Allah as much as you can. وَلَا يُكَلِّفُ اللَّهُ نَفْسًا إِلَّا وُسْعَهَا And Allah will never put a burden on a soul greater than it can bear. Greater than it can bear. So with regards to the obligation of, of fulfilling the commandment, this one is uh, coupled with ability. That one, he, if, he is, uh, if he is able to, physically able to fulfill the commandment entirely, properly, as has been legislated, then it's incumbent and obligatory upon him to perform in that way. But if he is not able to, for one reason or another, because of a sickness or because of some something uh, from uh, his, his body or his ability, physical ability, or there are other affairs that stop him from having or, or prohibit him and make him incapable of performing that commandment entirely, then he will perform it as much as he can. Then he will perform it as much as he can. And, and this has been clarified likewise in the Sunnah of the Prophet in Sahih Bukhari from the Hadith of uh, Imran ibn Hussein. رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ And the Prophet وسلم, he mentioned to him with regards to this. And he told him that it's an obligation for him to pray while he's standing. صَلِّ قَائِمًا And this is just like in accordance with what Allah has mentioned. وَقُومُوا لِلَّهِ قَانِتِينَ وَقُونُوا لِلَّهِ قَانِتِينَ Excuse me. وَقُونُوا لِلَّهِ قَانِتِينَ And stand obedient to Allah, meaning in prayer. So the ulama, they mentioned that وَقُونُوا لِلَّهِ قَانِتِينَ that uh, this, uh, this verse is the clarification of the obligation in the, of, st of standing, of standing in the Salat, al qiyam that it's a pillar from, from, the, from the pillars of Salat. But the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he told uh, Imran radiallahu anhu, Salli qa'iman, pray while you are standing. فَإِلَّمْ تَسْتَفِعْ But if you are not able to stand, then, then while you're sitting. And if you're not able to, then while you're on your side. So the obligation of praying, it must be performed. And the one who has the ability to stand, he must stand and in the obligatory prayer. And if he's not able to stand because of an ailment or a weakness or, or a sickness like this in his body, then it's allowed for him to sit. And even if he's not able to sit, then it's allowed for him to lay on his side. But he has to perform the salat. So long as his mind is with, is, is with him and he understands and he comprehends and he's sane. Naam. So this is the clarification here. That one he fears Allah as much as he can. And he obeys Allah and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as much as he can. And any time there is an issue where he's not able to fulfill the obligation entirely, then there will be ease that is brought in the deem. Walillahi alhamd. For him with regards to this commandment. With regards to this commandment. As for the prohibitions, then the Prophet وسلم, he mentioned this in an absolute sense, and he did not mention along with that any condition. Rather, he says, فَاجْتَنِبُوهُ نَهَيْتُكُمْ عَنْ شَيْءٍ in, in, in the other wording, uh, فَاجْتَنِبُوهُ Whatever I prohibited you from, then leave it. Whatever I prohibited you from, then leave it. Yani entirely. And, and if, I have prohibited, if I have prohibited you from anything, then leave it. Yani entirely. So the leaving off the prohibition and avoiding the haram and staying away from it entirely, this is not coupled with ability. This is not coupled with ability. So one would not say that he will leave off that which is har haram and impermissible as much as he can. La, la. This is an incorrect understanding. The ability and istidha'a and as much as one can, this is only with regards to fulfilling the commandments. 
As for staying away from the prohibitions, then they must be avoided entirely. Then they must be avoided and left off entirely. The ulama, they clarify and they mention a very beneficial point to remember with regards to this issue. And they, and they clarify the wisdom behind this. And that is because a, a commandment, this requires for a person to perform effort. In order to fulfill the commandment, he must have the ability to perform it and to comply to it and to, perf and, and to uh, go through in completing that particular commandment and that action. As for, and this requires effort from an individual in order to perform and to complete that deed. As for the prohibition, then this does not require any effort for an individual. This does not require any effort for an individual. So to have an example, for example, Salat, this uh, is an obligation to perform it and to perform it in the manner that is legislated likewise. But some people may not be able to stand or some people may not even be able to sit or some people may not be able to make ruku or sujood. And even some people from the new Muslims, for example, may not be able to recite al-Fatiha. In this case, there is ease that will come in their in the religion and there will, will be a way for them to fulfill that commandment according to their ability. Because some people have the ability to do these affairs and others, they do not have the ability to do these affairs. But if uh, one were, for example, is prohibited from smoking cigarettes, for example, smoking cigarettes is haram, it's impermissible. Allah says, "Wa la turqu bi aytiqum min al-tahdukiyati wa hsinu." Do not kill your own selves with with your own hands. And the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "La la darar, wa la dirar." There is no harm or reciprocating harm, and it's no doubt that smoking cigarettes is very harmful, harmful to the individual in his body, in his health, and harmful to his family, into his pocket, in his wealth, harmful in many ways, harmful to his deen, and likewise, and harmful in in, in many aspects. Nam and this dukhan uh, khabif. It's, 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 it's a filthy uh, substance and it's not from al-tayyibat al-lati ahalla Allahu azza wa jal bal hiya min al-khaba'ith huwa min al-khaba'ith in any case there's a prohibition you cannot smoke a Muslim he cannot smoke so it does not require any effort any, to go and smoke is the one that requires effort as to leave off smoking then everybody has the ability to do, to do it then everybody he has the ability to do it Likewise, maybe something that will make this clearer, for example, with regards to worldly affairs. If there is a rock, a heavy rock, and someone is told to pick it up, and or two people they are told to pick it up, pick up this rock, this big heavy rock. One of them is strong and he has ability, and the other one, he, and he's a grown man, and the other one, he's a young boy and he's weak. One is a grown man, he's strong, and he's physically strong, and he's capable, and he has ability. And he picks up the rock, and he can do it, and he can perform that. If somebody told him to pick up the rock, he's able to do it. He's physically able to do it. As for the young boy, he's five, six, seven years old, he's weak, his body is not strong. And if he's told to do it, he can't do it. He cannot do it. He's not able to. He doesn't have the ability. But if somebody told both of them, the strong man and the young boy... If they told both of them, don't touch the rock. Do not touch the rock. Strong man, the strong man, he, 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 it's, all, it's easy for him. They don't touch the rock. The, the weak young boy, likewise, he, he has the ability to not touch the rock. Therefore, with regards to the prohibitions, there is no attachment or relationship with ability because everybody has the ability to, to, to leave off things. So the one that requires ability is whenever one performs a deed and he performs an action. And this is with regards to complying to the commandments. As for leaving off the sins and staying away from the haram and leaving off the prohibitions, then this one, everybody has the ability to do that. So this is not with regards to uh, one's capability. Rather, it must be left off entirely. Naam, and this is also indicated in the verse that has preceded, in any case, this is from the fulfillments of the rights of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and likewise from the, the correctness of Iman al Iman. بالنبي صلى الله عليه وسلم وبالرسالته 
وبرسالته صلى الله عليه وسلم and it's from the correctness and the completeness of the statement أشهد أن محمدا رسول الله What is this point? اجتناب ما عنه نهى وزجرا It's very important for a believer to be aware of these affairs. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has preceded, he prohibited many times, many, there are many statements that are prohibited in the sunnah. There are many actions likewise, and there are many attributes and characteristics. There are many conducts, there's much conduct and many manners and etiquettes that are haram and prohibited in the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. These things, they must, a believer must be aware of them, he must know them. And because of this, the ulama, they have given great detail to clarifying the, the manhiyat and the muharramat that have come in the Qur'an and in the Sunnah. And uh, from this, they have authored works. And particularly, there are works authored with regards to this issue. And they're called books, the book Al-Kaba'ir, for example. Al-Imam Al-Dhahabi, rahimahullah, he died in 748. He has a book called Al-Kaba'ir. Al-Kaba'ir. And, and the major sins. And he will mention the affairs in the beginning uh, of the major sins and will, how to understand and realize and know what is the major sin. And then he mentioned them one after another. One, two, three, four, five, six. And he mentioned many of them. Likewise, the author here that we're studying, Sheikh Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab, rahimahullah ta'ala, he, he has a book likewise also entitled Al-Kiba'ir. Al-Kiba'ir. And it's a very beneficial book. Uh, and, and like Imam Dhahabi, rahimahullah ta'ala, he did similarly. And he mentioned them one after another chapter. The chapter there's a prohibition of this, and the chapter the prohibition of that, and the chapter the prohibition of this. And likewise, even in Riyadh al-Salihin, the very famous book by al hafiz al Nawawi. He died in the year 676. In that book, there is a many, there's a chapter, the affairs that are prohibited. He mentioned many affairs, many, many chapters, one after the other, one after the other, many, many chapters, many pages in that book with regards to the prohibitions. This is because this is from the completeness of faith and the perfection of Iman and the right of the Prophet wasallam, and a clarification that somebody is truthful in his statement, in his, in his declaration of faith. That he believes that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Muhammad ibn Abdullah, he is sent as a, as a prophet and messenger from Allah with revelation. That he will leave off that which he has, uh, has prohibited sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So this is something that must be learned, it must be known. And these books, for example, in the book of Shaykh Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab and other than them, and from the books that clarify these major sins and uh, affairs that are prohibited, it's very beneficial for a believer to read them and to study them and to learn them and to be aware of these affairs. And to be aware of these affairs in order to avoid them. In order to avoid them and stay away from them. The fourth affair that the author he has mentioned uh, with regards to the meaning of the shahada anna muhammad and rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he says wa alla yu'bad allahu illa bima shara'ah wa alla yu'bad allahu illa bima shara'ah that the prophet sallallahu excuse me uh, that allah azza wa jal he should not be worshipped in any manner except in the manner that that is legislated that he legislated and that allah and his messenger have have legislated or that Allah Azawajal has legislated for His Messenger, or at the hands of His Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So therefore, this is the completeness and the correct understanding and the meaning of this statement, that the one who testifies and he bears witness and he states on his tongue and he believes in his heart that Muhammad is the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, then this means that he will not worship Allah in any way whatsoever except according to the way of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And if he were to worship Allah in another way and to believe that that way is better, then this is a great, great deficiency in that testification. This is a great, great deficiency in faith and in understanding. Rather, he's the messenger of Allah and he was sent with the clarification and the revelation. He was sent to clarify the greatest right and that's the right of Allah and that he should be worshipped alone and how that worship should be Performed is clarified by the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he is the he is the the greatest of the, the and the best and the most sincere of the servants of Allah. And he is the one who who knows how to worship Allah Azza wa Jal and he is the one who has taught mankind how to worship him and to worship him upon his way it is an obligation and a condition for the acceptance of, of the deeds. It is an obligation and a condition for this the acceptance of the deeds along with uh, the sincerity and to do it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. So then Allah Azza wa Jalla, He's worshipped only, uh, He's worshipped alone with no partners, 
and he is worshipped only according to the way of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this is what that means whenever we say, Ashhadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Naam? That he said, Rahimahullah wa an la yu'bad Allahu illa bima shara'ah. That Allah should not be worshipped except in the manner that he legislated. Meaning not uh, according to desires or according to innovations. Naam? And that worship, it is, the ulama they say, al-ibadah, Tawqifiyya. Meaning that al aslu fihi al tashri' al tashri' meaning the Allah Azza wa Jal. That the fundamental principle with regards to worship is that one has to have an evidence in a text from the Quran and the authentic Sunnah to establish that worship because it's tawqifiyya. One person can't use his, his, his mind or what he thinks or his ijtihad and the likes like this to establish an act of worship. Rather, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he came to clarify that. Rather, he was sent to clarify that. So acts of worship, the origin with regard to them is, is that they are impermissible, except for what there is a text for. Acts of worship cannot be performed in any manner except in a manner displayed and clarified by the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this is what this declara declaration of faith, it means and it requires. It has been narrated from Aisha radiallahu and al hadith al mutafaq alayhi and that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said man ahdatha fi amrina hadha ma laysa minhu fa huwa raddun that whoever introduced uh, uh, an affair man uh, ahdatha fi amrina hadha ma laysa minhu fa huwa raddun whoever introduced into this affair that which is not from it and he introduced something uh, into the deen that which is not in accordance with our deen then it will be rejected and also in another wording of this narration by Ali Imam Muslim, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Man amila amalan laysa alayhi amruna fahuwa raddun. Man amila amalan laysa alayhi amruna fahuwa raddun. That whoever does a deed that is not in accordance to our deen, our affair, yani our deen, laysa alayhi amruna, yani laysa alayhi deenuna, and it's not in accordance to our deen, the deen that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came with, the deen that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was sent with, the deen that Allah Azza wa Jal completed at the hands of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the end of his life. Uh, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Al-yawma akmaltu lakum deenakum. Naam, akmaltu lakum deenakum. Naam, fa man amila amana laysa alayhi amru, laysa alayhi amruna, ay laysa alayhi deenuna. Fahuwa raddun, ay maradudun ala sahibihi, meaning it's rejected and it will never be accepted. It is rejected and it will never be accepted. These are affairs that are not from the deen of Allah Azza wa Jal. And they're not from Islam. Inna deena inda Allahi al-Islam. The verity the deen with Allah Azza wa Jal is al-Islam. Wa al-deen aladhi radhiyahu, radhiyahu Allahu li khalqihi, wa radhiyahu li nafsihi, awalan, subhanahu wa ta'ala huwa al-deen al-hanif. Deen al-Islam. Deen al-Islam. The religion of al-Islam, this is the religion that is accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Islam is not for the people to, to make up or to freestyle or to uh, innovate or introduce that which they think is good. And they have this tariqah and that tariqah and they have this way and they have, they have that way. And they have this group and they have that group. Rather, there's only one path. Huh? وَإِنَّ هَذَا صِرَاطِي مُسْتَقِيمًا فَاتَّبِعُوهُ وَلَا تَتَّبِعُوا السُّبَلَ فَتَفَرَّقَ بِكُمْ عَنْ سَبِيلِ Verily, this is my straight path, so follow it. And do not follow the other paths or else they will lead you away from my path. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentioned in his book, the way of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is one. The way of him and his messengers, excuse me, the way of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his companions, radiallahu anhum, is one. Whoever is in accordance to this path and this affair, then they're upon al-Islam properly. And whoever is contrary to that, then according to their opposition, it will be according to their deficiency in Islam. It will be according to their deficiency in Islam. The Prophet wasallam, he must be obeyed, he must be complied to, he must be believed, and he must be followed. Now, in a manner that he legislated, in a manner that he clarified, wasallam, not according to innovations. That Allah, he should not be worshipped in any manner, except in a manner that he has legislated. Except in a manner that he has, he has legislated. So anyone who worships Allah Azza wa Jal, contrary to the way of the Sunnah, or he does contracts and the likes, marriage contracts or even business contracts, contrary to that which has been clarified in the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, then it will be rejected. Then it will be rejected and it will not be accepted. Then it will be rejected and it will not be accepted. 
This narration of Aisha radiallahu anha, this is the clarification. This ver or excuse me, this hadith is con considered the scale for the correctness and understanding the the correctness of the actions with regards to the outward affair. And how the the action should be how the action should be performed outwardly, this hadith clarifies that. It must be in accordance with the deen of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, or it will be rejected. It must be in accordance with the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, or else it will be rejected. Man amila amalan laysa alaihi amruna fahuwa raddun, fahuwa raddun, ay mardudun ala sahibihi. With regards to the the deed and the inward aspect, then the scale for that is in the mal amalu bin niyat. In the amalu bin niyat. That verily the deeds are by way of the, inten the intention, and the intention must be for Allah alone. La ilaha illallah. So with these two together, La ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah, understand properly, then a person he can draw near to Allah. Then a person he can uh, seek the pleasure of Allah. As for the one who misunderstood one of these statements, or and he worshipped along with Allah another, then it will never be accepted from him. And if he died upon that, then billah, he will never have mercy again. then billah. As for the one who brought the, and he established the foundation of the shahada and la ilaha illallah, and he didn't make shirk with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and then he, in his, in his shahada that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah, he fell into innovations and following desires and whims and the likes, then likewise, those deeds that are based upon that, that are done from uh, innovations, they will not be accepted from him. The one who, for example, he says, come let's gather, we're going to have hilaq al dhikr, we're going to have gatherings of dhikr. And they're, they're going to say, you say the name of Allah, this name right here, a hundred times. And you, you say the name of Allah, this one, a hundred times. If you say this name of Allah, a thousand times, you will get this reward. You will get this reward. This right here, this hadith, this is where it applies. Because they claim that this is an act of worship. So then we see. We say, okay, where did the, did the Prophet wasallam say that if you say this name, and you sit in the gathering, and you say this name out loud like this, or you chant this name of Allah Azawajal, this many times that you have this reward? What do they say? Where's the hadith? Is it in Bukhari? Is it in Muslim? Is it in Abu Dawood? Tirmidhi? Nisa'i? Ibn Majah? Ibn Zidin? Ibn Khuzayma? Mustadrak al-Hakim? Ibn Hibban? Where's it at? Where's it at? Where's the hadith at that clarifies this? Because if not, then the Prophet, he said, مَنْ عَمِلَ عَمَلَ لَيْسَ عَلَيْهِ عَمْرُنَا فَهُوَرَدْ That whoever does a deed that's not in accordance to our deen, then it will be rejected. So then if they don't have a proof for that from the sunnah of the Prophet then their action is rejected. Their action is rejected. And they are not worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah will not accept that. Because worship is only accepted by Allah azawajal if it's according to the sunnah of his Prophet. That's why he sent him. That's why he sent him azawajal. That's why he sent the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to clarify to the people how to worship Allah. And to clarify the people the path to paradise. And to clarify the, to the people the path that lead away from paradise to the hellfire. وَإِنَّ هَذَا سِرَاتِ مُسْتَقِيمًا فَاتَّبِعُوهُ وَلَا تَتَّبِعُوا سُبُلَ فَتَفَرَّقَهُمْ فَتَفَرَّقَ بِكُمْ عَنْ سَبِيرِ فَتَفَرَّقَ بِكُمْ عَنْ سَبِيرِ so therefore, anyone who wants to draw near to Allah Azawajal and seek His pleasure and seek His mercy, then he must testify that there's nothing worthy of worship except for Allah and understand that properly and fulfill those conditions and that which it requires. And likewise, he must also testify that Muhammad, he's the messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and understand what that means and requires and perform that. And perform that. And anybody who worships Allah Azawajal, even if he's sincere, even if he's sincere, he worships Allah alone with sincerity, with ikhlas and a pure and a pure intention, hoping for the reward from Allah alone. But he did that contrary to the way of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. فَأَمَرُهُ مَرْدُودٌ فَأَمَرُهُ مَرْدُودٌ It will not be accepted. And it's not sufficient to have a good intention uh, for the deeds to be accepted. It's not sufficient to have a good intention for the deeds to be accepted. And what has... Clear, what is the evidence to clarify this is that which has come in Sahih Muslim and uh, on uh, Eid, on one of the Eid, Eid al-Adha with the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam there was a companion there was a noble companion radiyallahu anhu from the companions of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he had a beautiful intention and he wanted to be the first to slaughter the Udhiyah that day. 
And he wanted his family to be the first family to eat from the Udhiyah. And his Udhiyah to be the first one slaughtered that day to, uh, to please Allah, to, to, to hasten to do the good. And therefore he slaughtered his Udhiyah before the Salat of the Prophet وسلم, before the Salat al-Eid. Naam? Whenever he did this and he slaughtered the, his Udhiyah before the proper time that is legislated in the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Prophet he informed the people in the, in the khutbah and he said, uh, uh, he said uh, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that whoever slaughtered before the Salat that he must repeat, he must repeat the slaughtering that the, the Udhiyah it must be slaughtered after the, the, the Salat of Eid. And this man, he stood up, he said, but verily, I, I slaughtered mine before. And then I, I slaughtered mine before because I wanted the my family to be the first to eat and I wanted to be the first one to slaughter. And I was, you know, meaning he's hastening to the good. He had a beautiful intention, doing it for the sake of Allah alone. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he told this noble companion with this beautiful intention. He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, shatu kashatu lahm. That your the, the 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 sheep that you slaughtered is is simply just for food, meaning it's not an udhiyah, meaning it's not an udhiyah. Udhiyah is a type is a type of worship. To slaughter the udhiyah on the day of, on the day of Eid is the type of worship. Just to slaughter an animal on another day just to get food, this is permissible, but it's not an udhiyah. An udhiyah and this is slaughtered in the specific time, in spe specific days. There's rulings and re regulations with regards to that, clarified in the Sunnah. The Sahabi he was not aware of that, and he. Uh, had a beautiful intention, radiallahu anhu, but he did it before the proper time that is legislated in the sunnah. And the Prophet wasallam did not accept that from him. So therefore, having a beautiful intention is not enough. It's not enough for the deeds to be accepted. They must be in accordance to the sunnah and the way of the Prophet wasallam. And if not, they will be rejected. And if not, they will be rejected. Man, uh, man ahdatha fi amrina hadha ma laysa minhu fuhuwa raddun. That whoever introduces into uh, this uh, into our deen that which is not from it, then it will be rejected. This is specific. This is with regards to the one who innovates, whoever innovates in in, in our deen, in our affair. That which is not from it, then it will be rejected. And this one's specific. The one is, that is muttafiqun alayhi. This wording here. And with regards to the one who actually pr brings the introduction or the excuse me the innovation, the innovation. But as for the wording in uh, Sahih Muslim, then it's more general. It's more general. It includes the one who, you know, the one who introduced this innovation, and, and also the one who applied it and worked by way of it. Man amila amal and laysa alayhi amruna fahuwarad. Whoever does a deed, whoever does an action that is not in accordance to our deed, excuse me, that is not in accordance to our deen, then it will it will be rejected. Then it will be rejected. It will be rejected. So some people, whenever you try to inform them of the sunnah and to teach them. And you want good for them. And you tell them, this is not from the sunnah. Don't you know the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Man ahdatha fi amrina hadha ma laysa minhu fahu rad. Whoever introduces an innovation into this deen that's not from it, it will be rejected. Don't you know this deed is not, this is an innovation that has been introduced. It's going to be rejected. Some of them, they think they're bright and smart and they say, oh, I didn't introduce it. I'm only, I'm only applying it. Oh, I didn't introduce this. I'm only applying it. I'm only, I'm, so this hadith doesn't apply to me. We bring the other wording of Imam Muslim, Rahimahullah, Man Amila Amal and Naysa Alayhi Amru Nathwarad. Then whoever does a deed, or likewise there's another wording in Sahih Muslim, that whoever does an action that is not in accordance to our deed, then it will be rejected. Then it will be rejected. The opposite is understood as well. And we mentioned in closing, meaning that whoever does a deed that is in accordance to his affair, that is, that is according to his deen, then it will be accepted. Now, that whoever does a deed that's not in accordance to his deen and to his affairs, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, fuhu mardud. But whoever does a deed that is in accordance to his deen and upon, uh, correctly, upon his sunnah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, yani with ikhlas and al mudhaba then it is maqbool, fuhu maqbool, then it will be accepted. Wa mashkur, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept that deed. So this is the issue here, that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, whatever he mentioned is the truth, and every individual who makes this testification and believes in the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he must believe that whatever he says is the truth, is the truth from Allah azza wa jalla. 
and he must obey him and comply to his commandment and that which he has commanded sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he must leave off his prohibitions anything that he has prohibited sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he must leave it off entirely and likewise he must not worship Allah azza wa jal in any manner except in the manner displayed and clarified in the sunnah of the prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam after this the author he mentions what dalil as salati wa zakati wa tafsir wa tawheed qawluhu ta'ala wa ma umiru ila liya'budu allah mukhlisina lahu din hunafa wa yuqimu salata wa yutu zakat wa dhalika din al-qayyimah and he discusses the pillars of uh, the rest of the pillar of, pillars of al-islam as salat wa zakat and the explanation about tawheed and likewise as siyam wa al-hajj uh, and inshallah we continue in our next class. Hada wa sallallahu ala nabiyana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.